Hi, morning. I just wanted to pop on and get some thoughts out into the world. Um, so I thought I'd share them with you. Uh, bear with me because it might be a bit longer than my usual videos. I want to start with a story. It sounds religious, but it's not. That's not why I'm telling it you. So there's a guy, um, he's drowning in the river, got lost in the water. Don't know why he's there, but he's there. A uh, big branch comes past and he thinks, I won't grab that. I'm going to pray. I'm going to get God to save me. He'll save me. So he's praying away, lets the branch pass. Next thing, um, a boat comes by. Come in, get in. We'll, we'll save you. No, no, I'm praying. I'm waiting for God to save me. Time passes. This guy is not in a good position. Um, the a helicopter swoops in lowers its ladders come on up we'll save you we'll save you no i'm praying for god so the guy drowns i'm sure you've all heard this um and then he goes up to the pearly gates and god says to him um welcome my child and he says god god i was praying for you why didn't you save me and he said i sent along a branch and you refused to take it i sent along a boat and you refused to get on it I dropped down a ladder from a helicopter and you refused to climb it. That's why you're here, my child. So the reason I'm telling you that, <laughs> because I got to thinking about it this morning. I'm, I always get quite philosophical on my walks and I kind of reflect on, you know, what's going well? What's, what do I need to do a bit of work in? I've got a lot of frustrations this week, so they were whirring around my head. And I think this is kind of where that came from. Um, and I thought, actually, that story kind of sprung to mind for me because for me, it's not about God and it's not about some guy in a river. Actually, I see it all of the time and it's about communities. It's about the communities in this scenario for me are the God. They are throwing solutions to um, funders, guy in the river, to... Um, public services, to the NHS, to the communities have so many ideas and so many things that's working well. And it's like, it doesn't fit the, so it's not the, it's not the God that they're looking for. It's not the prayers. So it's, it's just rejected. Um, and, and, and they're told that they're the ones that, that need to go away and look differently at it or reword it or, create a different solution that fits what what's really wanted and I just thought that for me it's kind of it's totally the wrong way around you know I've spoke to so many people this week I've had a real week of connecting so it's Friday and I'm way behind with emails and admin so sorry people if you're waiting <laughs> for something from me but it's been so good to be back out there I have literally spoke to probably at least 20 individuals this week and also done some group stuff and I'm just hearing the same thing over and over again. Some really great work happening, some really great solutions to some of the many problems we've got in our communities at the moment. And just the doors constantly being shut, being told by people with the decision-making hats on and the purse strings that this is not the right thing, this is not what we want. Um, so it's a bit of a plea, really. Um, I'm just a small fish in a very big ocean, but please listen to your communities. They know what's needed. I had a conversation, and she might even watch this because we are um, friends on LinkedIn. Um, and it must be five years ago, and I feel like still it's the solution that, you know, there's people working solidly in communities. Um, and have been for doing many, many years, the same communities. It's like, what about if we invested in them? What if we about, we forgot about the project that we want them to deliver or the new emergency? You know, I know we're on warm banks at the minute, it's food banks and there's just, just the refugee asylum seekers. Like the priorities, they're all there, but we, we seem to jump from one to another and I expect projects to shift and shape and, and actually, you've got amazing community leaders who've given so much time and energy, just invest in them, trust them, trust what they can do. And they're really easy to find. They're already out there doing the work with very little money, very little support. Um, you know, just make your budgets and funds work for them. 
Um, don't let them have to spend hours and hours rejigging what they're trying to do to fit your priorities. It's kind of the wrong way around. And I know there's loads of great people out there and we get the computer says no. So I'm going to give you two of my own personal examples of things that I've been working on. I told you this was going to be a bit long. Um, so one is around social value. Um, I put a post on this week or last week actually about you know, how I've been trying to um, push for years about that we need to do it differently. We need to make it easy for businesses. Businesses do want to do it. Uh, they do want to give back, but they don't always have the ideas or they don't have the right people around to help them. We can make it easy for them. We, we can connect them to the communities that they need to speak to. We can get bring people in. So, so one of the things we did uh, in my local borough was something called Sector Connector uh, that worked really well where we had um, businesses coming along, the third sector, so voluntary community, social enterprise, faith groups. We had public sector, housing association partners, the likes. And we kind of just got everyone in a room and sometimes themed them around uh, a particular issue in the communities. Uh, but it was just a time for people to connect and get to know what other people were doing. So, you know, it, it worked well for a little while. And anyway, it hasn't, we, we haven't carried on with it through lack of funding. But the, there are so many things that we start, we pilot, we project, and it's like, where's the learning from it? We're on to the next shiny thing now. What's the next shiny thing that we can bring in to support rather than let's build on what's working? What's working? Who is behind it? Who else can we bring in to support that if it's not working 100% perfectly? Um, these are solutions that we can find between ourselves as communities, not by budget holders and not by people in positions of authority thinking they know best. So, so the social value thing for me, you know, I'm hearing regurgitated what we were talking about five years ago. Feels like, yes, we, we want to say we're making progress, but not that much is changing really. We've got more fancy policies we've had lots and lots of meetings but what is the real difference to communities who is seeing that benefit and if it's just a few then we're not getting it right um this has got to be supportive of everybody working in communities not just the ones who are great at being seen and have um the opportunity to go to lots of these sorts of meetings um you know i work alongside social value <laughs> and the things that we're trying to make happen and I don't get paid to go to meetings so I can't go to them all uh, sometimes I have to prioritize the paid work and that's the same for communities there's lots of great round tables happening and I, we need to move into communities we need to go and see the projects and I know some of you are doing that so thank you um, but we need to stop sitting around the tables and expecting to get the solutions in that room. The solutions are not around that table. They're in them communities. So please go and visit them. Um, look at what's working. Invest in it. Make your budgets more flexible so that people can do some of that trial and error. So the second example I wanted to talk to you about was we... At the Goodness Collective, that's the uh, social enterprise that I'm a founder of. We, along with uh, another social enterprise, PI, Pursuing Individual Excellence, there's a lady called Beth, um, and we put together a programme, thanks to ESF funding, which is no more, um, via the wonderful WEA, and Claire and Nicola were a huge support to us on that. And we really tested and learned what women in our communities needed who were out of work. And there was such flexibility with the fund, we were able to create a really good programme and project ESF funding's dried up. Um, we've been having conversations about how we continue to make that work. And Beth and I are still doing that in our own way, but not in the, the guise it was because we just can't afford to put the time into it um, like we were. 
But you know, the outcomes from that project were immense and it wasn't about bums on seats. It wasn't about getting women into the next available job that they weren't gonna last. One of the projects that I'm working on at the moment, some of the women actually have even started self-employment. Some of the women have actually even started jobs, but they need to come back to us because they're losing confidence. Something's not quite gone right. Something's happened in their personal life. We leave that door open and that flexibility to allow them to have one-to-one -one support if they need it. They can phone us, there's a peer support Facebook group. We, we've developed a lot of things based on what the women have told us that they need. And we haven't done it with the tick boxes in mind about, okay, you've had your 12 weeks on the course, off you go, sort it out yourself. Because we know women drop them back into, um, just feeling low again or feeling not confident and they need some additional input and support when we started talking to funders about how else this might look so um adult education budget and looking at p potentially subcontracting things like that. we've had some great conversations and some real interest in what we're doing but nothing quite fits um, we do a lot of personal development with our women. We do a lot of mentoring. So it feels like we've got to change what's a really successful pro project to fit in with funders, to fit in with the tick boxing. And Beth and I are both clear that we really don't want to do that. We don't want to create a project that fits the funding. We wanted to create a project that fits the women. Um, and, you know, the outcomes, yes, we know you've got to prove concepts and yes, we know you've got to prove that what you're investing in is useful and makes a difference. All you've got to do is the women are our outcomes. <laughs> we've been we've supported over it must be about 140 women now, more probably between different bits of projects we're doing. Um, but the outcomes are the women it speaks for themselves they are doing great things they have grown in confidence on international women's day um we've got a group of our women who it's called the empowerment project and um they are putting on a day of activities themselves sharing their skills sharing their support for other women um and some of them are open to men too but they are designing that, they are co-delivering it, they are building confidence and capabilities. A lot of these women don't need skills, they've got skills. They might need to tweak some skills or refresh some skills, but such there's so much of the money around supporting unemployment is skills-based and it's not the bit that a lot of women need. Um, and we're, we're desperate to change that, but again, frustrations. So I just wanted to come on and one encourage you if you're a business to get involved in some community stuff so social value is not writing fancy policies um csr you might want to call it corporate social responsibility esg environmental social goals all the words just do some stuff go into communities find out what's going on send your staff into communities you know i've seen businesses who the, the benefits this is the thing as well you're not going to do too and to support um community groups as the you know they're coming with the begging bowl and you're you're panding out the porridge it's actually this can really benefit you as a business too it can benefit your employees it can benefit morale if recruitment is an issue it, it's it supports that because people want to work with companies who get it you know, people are now turning down jobs. I saw some research this week. I can't quote it because I can't remember where I saw it or what the stats were, but that actually people are actively turning down jobs from employers who don't have a social conscience, who aren't doing things. Uh, and we're not talking, they serve a purpose, fun runs and cake sales and a lot of charities rely on them. But we're not just talking about that. We're talking about coming to some things where you get to know Get to know before you give is what and does it align with what your business is trying to do is it something where you can build a relationship and stick around longer than just um a sponsored event so yeah that's my plea to businesses my plea to funders <laughs> budget holders purse string tighteners 
Uh, please listen to your communities. Find a way to have some flexibility in your budgeting. budgeting. Uh, the computer says no thing for me doesn't work. We, we've seen that in government this week. The computers can say no when it wants to, and it can often say no to the wrong things with all supposedly the red tape that's involved in, in providing money. So let's stop hiding behind meeting rooms and round tables and new policies that we have to put in place and new things that we have to get checked. Let's trust the people in communities that are already delivering and have been delivering voluntarily, many of them for a very long time, who have the skills, who know the people. Um, yeah, so, so the solutions are there for you. Please take them and do me a big favour. <laughs> That would just help my job immensely because I get so many frustrated people talking to me. A lady yesterday who supports um, refugee and asylum seekers, in my opinion, massively being taken advantage of because she herself has been in that position. She's been asked left, right and centre by support agencies who do hold budgets and by councils and everybody else to do really vital work and do it from the goodness of her heart because they know she will because she they know that she's been there and she really gets this give her some money to do it she will do it she loves to do it but she's got to live as well find her some money to do that role in her community thank you for listening <laughs>